Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name's Mia. I make things and sometimes talk about plants. And if you've been here before, hello, it is good to see you. By the way, just before we jump into this, I am in the middle of making like a velvet sofa. So if you're seeing this and you're like, this is kind of cute, I'll show you how to make it in a couple of weeks time. Anyways, I'm gonna try not to talk too much because I think today's video is gonna be excessively long anyway, but if you're a fellow plant lover, you would have seen all of the many IKEA hacks going around for making like their glass cabinets into indoor greenhouses. I love them, I think they're so cute, and also, my house is fucking freezing, like, I don't know what it is about Australia, Melbourne gets cold, like, UK levels cold, every year, but they don't build houses for insulation, so yeah, I've been seeing these IKEA hacks floating around for ages, and I've been like, wow, that's so cute, I want one, However, moving into this house, I realized that I needed something because all of my plants were going into dormancy. So that's it. That's what we're making. It turned out so cute. It's really functional. My plants are living their best life and they're still growing in the middle of winter. Thank you, Lord. So yeah, let's just sit into making. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, drop a comment, all that good shit. And yeah, let's get into it. Look at this chaos. The cabinet I chose as a base is the IKEA Rudster cabinet. It's got three glass faces and the backing is magnetic, plus it's slightly cheaper than the other popular hackable cabinets like Millsbow. Personally, I actually also like the design of this one more. I think it's quite minimal, but it's really cute. And having the magnetic backing panel is a really handy feature for additional storage and whatnot. As you can see from the photo, the Rudster comes in a matte black, but as it was growing in my office, I decided it naturally had to be gold. So firstly, I just set to spray painting the frame in a gold colour I liked. If you also want to do this, which I recommend, it does look super cute and it's not that difficult, the door panels do come pre-assembled, so you won't be able to just remove the glass from the frame. Just use masking tape to completely cover all of the glass surface before spray painting though, and you will be fine. Hey friends, quick tip for not wasting your time basically. The two door panels are really easy to figure out which one, like which side you wanna mark off because they have handles. However, the side panels look pretty much exactly the same. So it's really hard to figure out, you know, which, which side is worth spray painting and which side is gonna be on the inside. So that you don't have to do both if you're lazy like me and you don't want to. If you look in step nine, the side that um the side that's on show is the side that's furthest away from those little like nubbin bits. So basically make sure that these are facing the floor and then spray paint the other side. Hey Boris! Oh yes! Once everything had dried, I totally just got my boyfriend to assemble it. For part two, we'll go through the features and accessories of the cabinet that make it a good home for plant babies. So there are two main mods that we made to the overall structure of the cabinet. Firstly, we left the bottom half of the two back panels loose so that we could slide cables out the back of them. And secondly, we drilled two holes in the top and used cable tie to secure a mini fan to them. It's a good idea to have a fan in your cabinet to increase airflow. It prevents fungal infections and diseases. I actually need to get another one for the bottom tier of this greenhouse. Personally, I only kept one of the shelves in so that my larger plants would have room to grow at the bottom. My top shelf is mainly for baby plants and propagating. Both the shelf and the actual base have a soil heating mat. These are designed for plants, so they're waterproof and safe to use. They basically increase the temperature by 5 to 10 degrees Celsius without causing heat stress. This has been a life changer for my plants. Like, like I mentioned before, our house is really, really cold, so anything to boost the temperature and make sure that my plants don't go into dormancy is a massive help. Naturally, I also have grow lights running across the top of the cabinet and the bottom of the shelf. I actually bought these just 
off eBay and surprisingly I really really like them. They pretty much come as a roll of tape with LEDs inside. I previously used them on my marble plant shelf then just peeled them off and restuck them in here. Actually, self promo time. If your house doesn't have the ambient temperature of the North Pole and you would like another super cute plant display, you should definitely check out my DIY IKEA plants and hack. It's super super cute. Anyways, back to grey lights though. So I did mention that the back panels of the cabinet are magnetic. This is a really handy feature if you run out of space like me because you can just pop in some magnetic spice shelves and voila, more space. I also use cable ties to secure some grow lights under my spice shelf so the plants below it are still getting some light too. Other than that, the main thing I recommend is having a thermometer that calculates humidity and the temperature within your cabinet. This is just so that you can monitor conditions and like make adjustments if necessary. The only reason that I don't have one at the moment is because the one that I had broke. So just waiting on a new one to be delivered. And on to the final part of the video, a tour of my greenhouse plants. So we'll start with the top tier of my cabinet, which is mostly plants that I'm propagating and baby plants that I've grown from cuttings. In my little propagation station, I've got two boxes full of spag moss. My first box is for some fancy aroids. I've got Cebu Blue, Variegated Epipenum Penatum, definitely said that wrong, and some Monstera El Salvador cuttings rooting in this one. And my second box is entirely full of philodendron pink princess cuttings. Most of these are pretty teeny tiny, but they've got some exciting new growth and colours on them. Now behind that, we have a few plastic cups with various other plants. One has some philodendron white princess cuttings that are honestly living their best life. And there's a fair few variegated monstera stantiliana cuttings too. Like I mentioned before, the rest of these are pretty much baby plants. I have a ton of philodendron pink princesses in here. They're all pretty low variegation at the moment, but I've been a good girl, so hopefully Santa will bring me some pink for Christmas. I have a few Monstera El Salvador's in here too. I love these. They're super easy care. They grow really quickly. Plus, look at those leaves. Divine. Now, one of my total favourite babies is this Cebu Blue Rooted Cutting. It's so cute and look at that root growth. I do have a few plants I cut that have regrown in here too, namely my Syngonium Pink Splash and Syngonium Fantasy, although that's looking a little too variegated for my comfort at the moment. Onto the bottom shelf. So, this is for a lot of my bigger plants, and let's just start with the winner here, my Monstera Thai Constellation. I grew this baby from a cutting, and I love her like I love my cat. She's a stunner. We also have the biggest disappointment of my life, a Picasso peace lily that just hates everything. I can't make her happy. She was suffering a little root rot when I got her and I managed to stop it from worsening, but it's also not improved. Um, if you have any tips, please share. The other two of my large plants are supposedly Philodendron Florida Ghosts. I hope these are the real deal because the mature plant is so fucking cool, but we might have to wait a few years to see. I have a couple more established Philodendron Pink Princesses and look at the variegation peeking out on my main mother. Thank you, Jesus. I appreciate your work. Next up are another few mother plants, my Syngonium Fantasies. My larger tub is triple planted and the smallest one is double planted, but these throw off the prettiest leaves, we'll get a look at them in a minute. Another one of my big mothers is this Philodendron White Princess. Its variegation isn't life changing, but hopefully we'll tease out of her eventually. And last but not least for big plant is my variegated Epiprenum Penatum. This bad boy has been cut back, but I'm so excited to see what it looks like when it's long enough to grow up a support when it gets those fenestrations. Lastly, we'll just check out my little propagation shelf too. One of my jars is full of Syngonium Fantasy cuttings. I actually have a few more on my windowsill because these are such speedy growers that I am running out of space, but I'm not complaining. And I have even more Philodendron Pink Princess cuttings here too, but with bigger leaves in this jar. And lastly, we've got some philodendron white princess cuttings. These are such big boys, I can't wait to root them and plant them up. Outside of the shelf, there are a couple more things that I'm propagating. Melbourne's in lockdown at the moment, so I'm out of spag moss and unable to run to the store, so I'm just using water for the time being. First off, we have my philodendron silver clouds. 
don't feel too bad for these guys. I caught them because there were some dead spots, I think due to low humidity, um, like where they were previously. And since cutting them back and moving them, they've been doing great. One of them is even pushing out a new shoot, which is exciting. And yeah, I have some other philodendron white princess cuttings too, but I think that's mostly it for my interesting plants. All right, pals, let's end at the end. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you made it all the way to 10 minutes, thanks and have a good one.